Our previous video, we took a look at series solutions, specifically power series solutions, to differential equations. The catch is we can only do these power series solutions if the series converges to a function. It's not necessary that we know what the function is, it just needs to converge and not diverge to infinity. So our question is going to be then, do series solutions always converge to a function solution? And before we can answer that, we have to first remind ourselves about what are called analytic functions. And we're not going to go too deep into uh, the theory of analytic functions and what they are as much as just kind of acknowledge what they are and where the problems, at least the common problems, come out for our purposes. Let's let f be a function. If it is true that f prime of 0 exists and f prime prime of 0 exists and so on and so forth all the way down to n of 0 exists. Basically, if we have infinitely differential at 0. We can continue to take derivatives and plug 0 in and that function will be defined. Then f of x equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative at 0 divided by n factorial x to the n converges the function is analytic. In other words, we can write the function as a power series then the function itself is an analytic function. In other words, to more formally state it, the function is real analytic at zero if there exists some radius greater than zero such that the f of x equals to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the nth derivative at zero divided by n factorial x to the n where the absolute value of those x's is less than the radius. In other words, we're saying the function is equal to the Taylor series of the function. Now, this can be generalized. For our course, we're going to always be interested in real analytic at zero. But technically, we could generalize this and say the function is real analytic at some point A if there exists some radius greater than zero such that f of x is equal to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f at that point a divided by n factorial times x minus a to the n power where the absolute value of the x minus a is less than that radius. But we usually, for this course, will let that a equal 0. 
So why does this all matter? It matters very much when we're solving differential equations around these things called singular points. When we're solving a second order differential equation and trying to use a power series solution, quite often we can rewrite it in the form y prime prime plus some function of x times y prime plus another function of x times y equals zero. This function has a singular point a if p of a or q of a are not analytic. We're more interested in the opposite is true, what are called ordinary points, which basically is the opposite. An ordinary point is where P of A and Q of A are analytic. So that's what we're interested in deciding is are we working with a singular point or are we working with an ordinary point because that's going to change our strategy. First let's look at identifying where the singular points are. Let's say we have the differential equation x y prime prime plus y prime plus x y equals zero. This isn't quite in the correct form because you notice the y prime should have a coefficient of one. So if we divide both sides by x, we end up with y prime prime plus 1 over xy plus y. And there's a problem with 1 over x. 1 over x is not analytic at x equals 0. Because if we were to take a derivative and plug 0 in, we would get an undefined point. Therefore, x equals 0 is a singular point. All the other points are ordinary points. x equals 5 is an ordinary point. x equals negative pi is an ordinary point. But x equals 0 is a singular point because one of the functions, this time the p of x function, was undefined or does not exist at zero. So it's not analytic. Now we need to be careful when we compare it with x y prime prime plus the sine of x y prime plus x squared y equals zero. Because now if we divide everything by x we get the sine of x over x y prime plus x y equals zero. And you might remember from our study of calculus, sine x over x can be written as a Taylor series. So even though the function is undefined, we can write this as a function of its derivatives. And so 0 is actually an ordinary point. Therefore, there are no singular points. in this expression. What if I had y prime prime plus x squared y plus the square root of x y equals zero? Well we've got a problem this time with the square root of x because it is not differential at x equals 0. It's undefined. If you take the first derivative, we get x to the negative 1 half times 1 half. And you plug 0 in, you get 0 in the denominator. Therefore, x equals 0 is a singular point here. In fact, we could also have the negatives because it's not defined at the negatives, so it doesn't exist at the negatives either. Basically, x has to be positive to be an ordinary point. 
Now, I wouldn't stress too much about uh, some of those special cases. Most of what we're going to look at, in fact, all of what we're going to look at in this course is going to be a lot more straight forward. You're going to see expressions in this class more like x squared minus 4y prime prime plus 3xy prime plus y equals 0. And then you're going to be asked to determine maybe what are the singular points and the ordinary points in this expression. Well, if we divide by that front term, we get y double prime plus 3x over x squared minus 4, y prime, plus 1 over x squared minus 4, y equals 0. And we can see pretty clearly that we have x plus 2, x minus 2 as our denominators, which means our derivatives are going to be undefined when x is equal to 2 and negative 2. And so those are our singular points. So most of the time it's almost going to feel like a domain question, although really we're looking at whether or not the functions are analytic. Can we write them as a Taylor series, a function of their derivatives? So why do we care so much? Well, in our previous video, we kind of ignored the problem with singular points. In fact, all the problems we did in our previous video were ordinary points. And with the ordinary points, there is going to be a solution that is a power series using y equals the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n only works if x equals 0 is an ordinary point, which basically is saying not singular. We won't be able to get the independent solutions to our differential equation if we're dealing with a singular point. And I guess we could generalize this even though we don't use other points. We could use y equals the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n times x minus a to the n. Now we're centered not at 0, but at some point a. And that only works if our center, x equals a, is an ordinary point. But if I had a function like x, y prime prime plus y prime plus y equals 0, this is the one we did up in example 4a up there. Dividing by the x gives us y prime prime plus 1 over x y prime plus 1 over x y equals 0, which means x equals 0 is a singular point. What that means is we cannot solve this differential equation with a power series that y equals the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n. That does not work. So what we're going to do today on today's assignment is we are going to look exclusively at ordinary points and we'll take a little bit of time to notice that they are ordinary points. However, when we get a singular point, we're going to need a different strategy, and that's what the next video is going to take a look at. Today's problem set is going to give you a chance to practice more with these power series solutions to ordinary points, and then once we get really good at those, we'll take a look in our next video for what we do with these singular points. So, Good luck on the practice, and let me know what questions you have.